Sup, bra? Do you love cars and hate sleeves? Then you probably like the Fast and the Furious movies. A massive film franchise with eight films in the main series, a ninth on the way, a spin-off film, a brand of steroids, and a line of head shaving products. So put your corona down and get ready to shift into overdrive because this is Fast and Furious Franchise History. After almost 20 years on the scene, the Fast and Furious brand is as big and veiny as ever and is destined to continue as long as it remains profitable. But how has this franchise had so much longevity when other hit films fart out a lame sequel or two and would be rebooting by now? I think a big factor was the success of Fast Five, which revitalized the series and became the template for its continued success. But in this video, we're looking at the Fast film's comparatively humble beginnings. The Fast and the Furious was a big hit in 2001. Directed by Rob Cohen, the film had a rather modest budget of $38 million. It would eventually gross over $200 million worldwide. That's a lot of Coronas. The plot was very similar to the film Point Break from a decade earlier, in which Keanu Reeves plays an FBI agent who goes undercover to infiltrate the Southern California surfing scene to identify robbers believed to be surfers. The basic story is almost identical with the surfing being swapped out for street racing. While we're on the subject, how awesome would it be to have Keanu Reeves play the villain in a fast movie? Just saying. Alpha nerd Vin Diesel received top billing for playing racially ambiguous street racer Dominic Toretto. Diesel was a rising star who was in the drama Boiler Room and the sci-fi film Pitch Black the previous year. The late Paul Walker played the lead character, Golden Retriever turned FBI agent Brian O'Connor. At the time, Walker was known for playing supporting roles in teen movies like She's All That, Varsity Blues, and The Skulls, also directed by Rob Cohen. Fellow teen movie alum Jordana Brewster played Mia, Dominic's sister and Brian's love interest. Michelle Rodriguez played Letty, part of Dominic's crew and his girlfriend. She had gained notoriety for starring in the 2000 independent film Girl Fight, and has gone on to make a career out of playing tough chicks. This movie is a lot more gritty and realistic than the ones that would follow. It's not very creative, but it's well executed, and I feel like it holds up. The sequel, Too Fast, Too Furious, premiered two years later, and was originally intended to star both Walker and Diesel. But Diesel declined to return, opting instead to star in The Chronicles of Riddick, a sequel to Pitch Black, leaving Walker as the only actor to reprise his role. Too Fast, Too Furious again centered around the Walker character, Brian, going undercover to bust a criminal. This time there was a buddy cop comedy duo element, with Brian partnering up with estranged friend Roman, played by Tyrese Gibson. Roman has a grudge against Brian because Roman did jail time for possession of stolen cars, but Brian was never caught. It's like 48 Hours meets Scarface. but with a PG rating. The two leads have decent chemistry and give good performances, but the story is uninspired. I think if Brian was assigned a straight-laced, by-the-book partner, we could see more of how he was now less cop and more renegade, making Walker more like the Vin Diesel character from the first film and providing him with a character who accentuated that through contrast would have been more interesting than simply keeping Brian bland and giving him a comedy sidekick. But at least there wasn't any cringeworthy identity politics stuff from the Tyrese character. Credit to director John Singleton for making race a non-issue and making a fun movie. He had a diverse cast without making the movie about diversity. This film is also notable for introducing the Chris Ludacris Bridges character, Tej Parker, who like Tyrese's character Roman, would go on to be a fixture of the franchise. Also, Eva Mendes is really hot, so there's that. The film made about 30 million more than the first, but the budget was 38 million higher, twice that of the original, with likely more spent on advertising as well, so the profits of the first two films were probably about even. Again, not a bad movie, but not as fun as a movie like Rush Hour 2. In 2006 came Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, more of a spin-off than a true sequel, 
as it featured none of the characters from the previous films, save a cameo from Vin Diesel. The film is like Karate Kid with street racing. American Kid moves to Japan and learns to street race from Sage Master to get the girl and win the showdown. Very standard fare, if stylishly directed. With almost nothing to connect to the other films, it feels like a cheap attempt to cash in on the Fast and Furious name. Though it wasn't actually cheap at all. It cost $85 million, as much as the second film. But it made only $159 million, which means it's likely to have lost money, or at best broke even if the marketing budget had been kept low. Tokyo Drift is noteworthy for introducing the character Han, played by Sung Kang, who is the hero's mentor in the film. It is also the first film in the franchise directed by Justin Lin. 2009 brought the fourth film, titled Fast and Furious. This feels like the first true sequel to the original. Director Justin Lin returns, welcoming back Paul Walker, Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez, and Jordana Brewster, all prominently featured in the promotional material. Perhaps it was for the best that eight years passed before Diesel returned. It gave the film a specialness the other sequels lacked. The highlight of the film may be the fight between Brian and Dom. The build-up started in the first film, and the two are at odds from the start here. It's short but thrilling, and acts as the turning point when the two acknowledge their own faults and team up for the remainder of the story. The problem of weak stories and weak villains continues, but the revenge plot is serviceable, and it's great to see the original cast back in action. Brian and Dom go undercover independently of each other to catch the crime lord of the week, but this time there's a real sense of danger and a personal element. The magic of the first film is right and truly back, and I'd say it's the best Fast movie up to that point. Fast and Furious was given the same budget as Tokyo Drift, $85 million, but it made over $363 million, $100 million more than the original. This massive success all but ensured the series would continue, as will this series with the in-depth analysis of Fast Five. Thanks for watching, see you next time.